The next thing is physical AI. This is an area that you've seen me talk about for several years. In fact, we've been working on this for eight years. The question is, how do you take something that is intelligent inside a computer and interacts with you with screens and speakers to something that can interact with the world, meaning it can understand the common sense of how the world works. Object permanence. If I look away and I look back, that object is still there. Um, causality. If I push it, it tips over. It understands friction and gravity. It understands inertia. That a heavy truck rolling down the road is going to need a little bit more time to stop. That a ball is going to keep on rolling. These ideas are common sense to even a little child, but for AI, it's completely unknown. And so we have to create a system that allows AIs to learn the, the common sense of the physical world, learn its laws, but also to be able to, of course, learn from data, and the data is quite scarce, and to be able to evaluate whether that AI is working, meaning it has to simulate in an environment. How does an AI know that the, the actions that it's performing is consistent with what it should do if it doesn't have the ability to simulate the response of the physical world back on its actions? The response of its actions is really important to simulate. Otherwise, there's no way to evaluate it. It's different every time. And so this basic system requires three computers. One computer, of course, the one that we know that NVIDIA builds for training the AI models. Another computer that we know is to inference the computer, inference the models. Inferencing the model is essentially a robotics computer that runs in a car or runs in a robot or runs in a factory, runs anywhere at the edge. But there has to be another computer that's designed for simulation. And simulation is at the heart of almost everything NVIDIA does. This is, this is where we are most comfortable. And simulation was really the foundations of almost everything that we've done with physical AI. So we have three computers and multiple stacks that run on these computers, these libraries, to make them useful. Omniverse is our digital twin, physically based simulation world. Cosmos, as I mentioned earlier, is our foundation model, not a foundation model for language, but a foundation model of the world. And it's also aligned with language. You could say something like, you know, what's happening to the ball? And they'll, they'll tell you the ball's rolling down the street. And so a world foundation model, and then, of course, the robotics models. We have two of them. One of them is called Groot. The other one's called Alpamayo that I'm going to tell you about. Now, the, one of the most important things that we have to do with physical AI is to create the data to train the AI in the first place. Where does that data come from? Rather than, instead of having languages, because we created a bunch of text that are what we consider ground truth that the AI can learn from, how do we teach an AI the ground truth of physics? There are lots and lots of videos, lots and lots of videos, but hardly enough to capture the diversity and the type of interactions that we need. And so this is where great minds came together and transformed what used to be compute into data. Now, using synthetic data generation that is grounded and conditioned by the laws of physics, grounded and conditioned by ground truth, we can now selectively, cleverly generate data that we can then use to train the AI. So for example, what comes into this AI, this Cosmos AI world model on the left, on, over here, is the output of a traffic simulator. Now this traffic simulator is hardly enough for an AI to learn from. We can take this, put it into a Cosmos foundation model, and generate surround video that is physically based and physically plausible that the AI can now learn from. And there are so many examples of this. Let me show you what Cosmos can do. The ChatGPT moment for physical AI is nearly here. But the challenge is clear. The physical world is diverse and unpredictable. Collecting real-world training data is slow and costly, and it's never enough. The answer is synthetic data. It starts with NVIDIA Cosmos, an open, frontier world foundation model for physical AI. 
pre-trained on internet scale video, real driving and robotics data, and 3D simulation. Cosmos learned a unified representation of the world, able to align language, images, 3D, and action. It performs physical AI skills like generation, reasoning, and trajectory prediction. From a single image, Cosmos generates realistic video. From 3D scene descriptions, physically coherent motion. From driving telemetry and sensor logs, surround video. From planning simulators, multi-camera environments, or from scenario prompts, it brings edge cases to life. Developers can run interactive closed-loop simulations in Cosmos. When actions are made, the world responds. Cosmos reasons. It analyzes edge scenarios, breaks them down into familiar physical interactions, and reasons about what could happen next. Cosmos turns compute into data, training AVs for the long tail, and robots how to adapt for every scenario. I know, it's incredible. Cosmos is the world's leading foundation model, world foundation model. It's been downloaded millions of times, used all over the world. Getting, world, getting the world ready for this new era of physical AI. We use it ourselves as well. We use it ourselves to create our self-driving car, using it for scenario generation and using it for evaluation. We could have something that allows us to effectively travel billions, trillions of miles, but doing it inside a computer. And we've made enormous progress. Today, we're announcing Alpamayo, the world's first thinking, reasoning, autonomous vehicle AI. Alpamayo is trained end-to-end, -end, literally from camera in to actuation out. The camera in, lots and lots of miles that are driven by itself, where we human drive it, driven, using human demonstration, and we have lots and lots of miles that are generated by Cosmos. In addition to that, hundreds of thousands of examples are labeled very, very carefully so that we could teach the car how to drive. Alpha Mayo does something that's really special. Not only does it take sensor input and activates steering wheel, brakes, and, and acceleration, it also reasons about what action it is about to take, it tells you what action is gonna take, the reasons by which it came about that action, and then of course, the trajectory. All of these are coupled directly and trained very specifically by a large combination of human trained and as well as Cosmos generated data. The result of it is just really incredible. Not only does your car drive as you would expect it to drive, and it drives so naturally because it learned directly from human demonstrators. But in every single scenario, when it comes up to the scenario, it reasons about, it tells you what it's going to do, and it reasons about what you, what's about to do. Now, the reason why this is so important is because of the long tail of driving. There, it's impossible for us to simply collect every single possible scenario for everything that could ever happen in every single country, in every single circumstance that's possibly ever going to happen for all the population. However, it is very unlikely, it's very likely that every scenario, if decomposed into a whole bunch of other smaller scenarios, are quite normal for you to understand. And so these long tails will be decomposed into quite normal circumstances that the car knows how to deal with. It just needs to reason about it. We started working on self-driving cars eight years ago, and the reason for that is because we reasoned early on that deep learning and artificial intelligence was going to reinvent the entire computing stack. And if we were ever going to understand how to navigate ourselves and how to guide the industry towards this new future, we have to get good at building the entire stack. Well, 
As I mentioned earlier, AI is a five-layer cake. The lowest layer is land, power, and shell. In the case of robotics, the lowest layer is the car. The next layer above it is chips. GPUs, networking chips, CPUs, all that kind of stuff. The next layer above that is the infrastructure. That infrastructure, in this particular case, as I mentioned with physical AI, is omniverse and cosmos. And then above that are the models. And in the case of the models above that I've just shown you, the model here is called AlphaMayo. And AlphaMayo today is open sourced. We, this incredible body of work, it took several thousand people. Our AV team is several thousand people, just to put in perspective. Our partner, uh, Ola, I think Ola is here in the audience somewhere, uh, Mercedes, uh, agreed to partner with us five years ago to go make all of this possible. We imagine that someday a billion cars on a road will all be autonomous. You could either have it be a robo-taxi that you're, you're, you're uh, orchestrating and, and renting from somebody, or you could own it and it's driving, for you, driving by itself, or you could decide to drive for yourself. And so, but every single car will have autonomous vehicle capability. Every single car will be AI-powered. And so the, the, the model layer in this case is AlphaMayo, and the application above that is the Mercedes-Benz. Okay, and so, so this entire stack is our first NVIDIA first entire stack endeavor. And we've been working on it for this entire time, and I'm just so happy that the first AV car from NVIDIA is going to be on the road in Q1, and then it goes Europe in Q2, here in the United States in Q1, then Europe in Q2, and I think it's Asia in Q3 and Q4. And the powerful thing is that we're going to keep on updating it with next, ver next versions of AlpaMayo and versions after that. There's no question in my mind now that this is going to be one of the largest robotics industries, and I'm so happy that we worked on it. And it taught us an enormous amount about how to help the rest of the world build robotic systems. That deep understanding and knowing how to build it ourselves, building the entire infrastructure ourselves, and knowing what kind of chips a robotic system would, would need. In this particular case, dual Orins, the next generation dual Thors, these processors are designed for robotic systems and was designed for the safe, highest level of safety capability. This car just got rated, it just went to production. The Mercedes-Benz CLA was just rated by NCAP, the world's safest car. It is the only system that I know that has every single line of code, the chip, the system, every line of code, safety certified. The entire model system is based on a sensors are diverse and redundant, and so is the soft driving car stack. The Alpha Mayo stack is trained end to end and has incredible skills. However, nobody knows until you drive it forever that it's going to be perfectly safe. And so the, we, the way we guardrail that is with another software stack, an entire AV stack underneath. That entire AV stack is built to be fully traceable. And it's taken us some five years to build that, some six, seven years actually, to build that second stack. These two software stacks are mirroring each other. And then we have a policy and safety evaluator decide, is this something that I'm very confident and can reason about driving very safely? If so, I'm going to have Alpamayo do it. If it's a circumstance that I'm not very confident in and the safety um, policy evaluator decide that we're going to go back to a, a very a simpler, safer guardrail system, then it goes back to the classical AV stack. We're the only car in the world with both of these AV stacks running and all safety systems should have diversity and redundancy. Well, our vision is that someday, every single car, every single truck will be autonomous. And we've been working towards that future. This entire stack is vertically integrated, of course, in the case of Mercedes-Benz. We built the entire stack together. We're gonna to deploy the car. We're gonna operate the stack. We're gonna maintain the stack for as long as we shall live. However, like everything else we do as a company, we build the entire stack but the entire stack is open for the ecosystem. And these, the ecosystem working with us to build L4 and robo-taxis is expanding and it's going everywhere. I fully expect this to be, well, this is already a giant business for us. It's a giant business for us because they use it for training, our, training data, 
processing data and training their models. They use it for synthetic data generation. In some cases, in some, car, in some companies, they pretty much just build uh, the computers, the chips that are inside the car. And some companies work with us full stack. Some companies work with us some partial part of that. Okay, so it doesn't matter uh, how much you decide to use. You know, my only request is use a little bit of video wherever you can. And, uh, you know, but uh, uh, er, the, the entire thing is open. Now, this is going to be the first large scale mainstream um, AI, physical AI market. And this is now, I think we can all agree, fully here. And this inflection point of going from not autonomous vehicles to autonomous vehicles is probably happening right about this time. In, in the next 10 years, I'm fairly certain a very, very large percentage of the world's cars will be autonomous or highly autonomous.